to understand what's happening uh, happening in India today, one must study the history of India from ancient times, like mm. going back to maybe at least a thousand years back to start studying what was happening in India then, mm -hmm. right? Um, and why did the Muslims feel this sense of uh, fear from the extreme uh, element within the Hindu community in India? Uh, because Muslims had uh, existed or coexisted in uh, India with Hindus for over a thousand years, right? So uh, they had good reasons, solid reasons to fear living under a Hindu rule in India, especially when it would be a democracy when the British left, because Hindus were the majority. And this argument that Muslims uh, from Bengal and uh, West, uh, Western India and Central India collective, uh, collectively would have outnumbered the, the current Hindu majority of India is absurd. Anyone who knows the demographics uh, of India wouldn't argue in that way. Why? Because what has changed today? There are more Muslims in India uh, than there are in Pakistan. And they are demographically divided in ways that they cannot have a real impact politically uh, on the politics of the country. So uh, if you look at the Muslim population in India, it's, it, it, it is in pockets. There is a pocket in Hyderabad, there's a pocket in uh, uh, northern India, there are a few pockets um, possibly in West India. Okay, And because they are divided demographically, uh, they cannot have a real impact politically. How many MPs do Muslims have in the parliament in India today? How many? How mm -hmm. many real leaders who can actually stand and t talk for Muslims? There is one or two. There are one or two people, of course. This is why the founding fathers of Pakistan demanded a separate homeland in order to protect uh, the unique identity Muslims professed. Hinduism is a new idea. Yeah. Hindus are not homogeneous. They're not monolithic. They yeah. don't exist Ooh. as a pocket, as one uh, united entity. Th that was never the case. If you pick up uh, histories from the Mughal period and mm. even before that, they are written in Persian, mm. even written by Hindus, even written so by who Hindus. who created Hinduism? Uh, Hinduism was created by the British, okay, to divide okay. the Muslims and Hindus uh, along com uh, religious lines mm. so that they are easily governed. And uh, the British uh, st uh, establishment, colonial establishment, favoured uh, Hindus over Muslims because they feared that Muslims who have lost power in India will try to come back to, to, to mm. or they will try to claim back that glory once they once had in India. So that was the reason why uh, the British political establishment favoured Hindus and Hindus were appointed in important positions even in the 19th century. So the, the War of Independence or the Indian Mutiny uh, of 1857 yeah. caused the Muslims to be marginalized. They were completely sidelined uh, because the British blamed the Muslims entirely for that mutiny, even though it was sparked or initiated by Hindus. The Hindu garrison at Meerut in India in 1857, it was actually started by a Hindu uh, soldier within the British East India Company um, mm. army. His name was Mangal Pandey and he initiated the rebellion and it then, then it grew to other regions of northern India. And then the Mughal emperor, who was a puppet already uh, anyway, was forced into it by on gunpoint. Some of these mutineers, they came and they occupied Delhi and they forced the emperor to take leadership because they didn't have a leader. They didn't have a leader, so they wanted some kind of central leadership. So the blame was put on Muslims, to cut the long story short, and Muslims were thenceforth completely marginalized from important positions. Mm. They were given to Hindus, uh, Muslims lacked education. For that reason, people like Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan, uh, who had some erroneous ideas on Islam, unfortunately, he you know, kind of sparked many controversies when it comes to his theological views. But when it comes to his leadership for the Muslim community in India, he was very sincere. He wanted good for the Muslims. So for that purpose, to that end, he established this uh, college called Anglo-Muslim College in a place called Aligarh, which later mm -hmm. on came to be known as the Aligarh University, the Oxford of Muslims mm -hmm. in India, basically. Mm -hmm. right? And the Aligarh University produced many intellectuals because he could see, Sir Sayyid could see, Sir Sayyid, his name was Sayyid Ahmad Khan. Uh, okay. Sir was the title given by the British mm. establishment to, to him for his achievements, right? So he could see that Muslims, if something is not done very fast, will uh, suffer financially, economically, you know, politically, 
uh, and that will impact Muslim well-being in India. So that's why he established this educational institution to have an elite for the Muslim uh, community so that Muslims can have effective leaders, intelligent leaders, educated leaders who can mm. lead, the, uh, lead the Muslims of the subcontinent. Yeah, okay. And that is what produced directly or indirectly that particular group of people uh, which rose to lead the Muslims during the independence movement later mm. on in the Okay, so then how does Kashmir? Century. How does Kashmir? Kashmir issue was? is basically uh, another a very unfortunate episode in the history of colonial India. Uh, Kashmir is predominantly Muslim, yeah, right? Okay. Kashmir was governed by Muslims for over a thousand years. Again, uh, Muslim uh, sultans uh, had direct rule over Kashmir, okay? In fact, we can find coins to this day uh, from the Mughal period minted in Kashmir. In Surinagar, you have uh, the Mughal Emperor Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar. Mm -hmm. um, his coins were minted in Surinagar. I, I have these coins in my personal collection. Oh, wow. So Kashmir has been there okay. as Muslim territory for a very long time. Mughal emperors would go there for uh, you know uh, rec recreational purposes they would Recreation go and spend purposes, their time yeah. there if, 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 if an emperor felt uh, sick or ill they would make their way to Kashmir I mean there are so many examples then after the Mughals declined um, other dynasties came in for example the Durranis the Afghans right okay. Ahmad Shah Abdali um, or also known as Ahmad Shah Durrani uh, he governed Kashmir directly. There are coins. Was that after the Mughals? After the Mughals. So how did how was Kashmir lost from? Mm -hmm. I mean, how did Muslims lo lose control of Kashmir, which is predominantly Muslim? Demographically, Kashmir is a Muslim territory. Okay, I would say over eighty percent of the, the, the population is Muslim, right? So when India was divided by the British uh, colonial establishment, Kashmir would naturally come to. Pakistan, Pakistan, right? But Kashmir was a semi-independent territory ruled by a Hindu, a Hindu family called the Dogras. Okay, this Hindu family got the the control of uh, Kashmiri territory in the mid 19th century from the Sikhs, mm. because Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Uh, again, it's going to be a very long history lesson, I'm, and I'm going to shorten it uh, so that people understand yeah. where we're coming from. Uh, Sikhs. Um, uh, governed parts of India, particularly Punjab, the Punjab region, for nearly 50 years. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Maharaja Ranjit Singh, <clears throat> who was born in current day Pakistan, Gujranwala, okay, uh, he rose to unite, or he took leadership as, uh, as a young man of the Sikh uh, divided uh, military orders. He united them. There were 12 uh, different orders in different parts of Punjab. Okay, of the Sikhs, and they call them Mithils. Mithil actually means a group okay, uh, of okay. people who are, it's like a military group. So they would go into different territories, rob, plunder, and this is how they lived, right? So Ranjit Singh united all these 12 groups and became the leader, and he took Lahore from the Duranis, okay? Oh. So after he occupied Lahore in 1799, uh, thenceforth he governed uh, with an iron fist parts of Punjab, and at one point, he was governing territory from Peshawar to Multan. Wow. Okay. Yes. Uh, and he governed for 40 years. He died in 1839. Cut the long story short. Mm -hmm. Within 10 years, his empire uh, was dismantled. And there were two Anglo-Sikh wars. The British had their eyes on the Punjab, which is a very fertile yes, region. Very fertile. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it was producing... Uh, Rice, sugar, a, a lot of things. A lot of things. Yeah. So the British had their eyes on the Punjab. So they defeated the Sikhs in two wars, two Anglo-Sikh wars, and the Sikhs lost the influence in Punjab and the British uh, imposed their direct rule. Now at that time, uh, Kashmir was governed by the Sikhs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, Kashmir was occupied by Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And there are coins minted in Kashmir in the name of Maharaja Ranjit Singh and his sons, Sher Singh and you know others who came. I mean, there were not many, unfortunately, they all kind of died within a very short span of time after their father was uh, mm. gone. So Kashmir became a territory ruled by the Sikhs. But then the governor of Kashmir was Hindu. His name was Gulab Singh. Okay, uh, Gulab Singh was directly attached to the court of Maharaja Ranjit Singh in Lahore. So when uh, things went wrong 
uh, upside down in the center, Gulab Singh uh, announced his independence mm -hmm. and they came to be known as the Dogras. Okay, this was okay. the Dogra family. So there was now direct rule of the Dogras mm -hmm. um, over they, they the valley of Jammu and Kashmir. Which okay. is predominantly Muslim population. Population is still Muslim. Okay. Predominantly. Over 90% is still Muslim. Okay. So uh, from then to 1940s when India was basically split into two halves mainly um, the, the the family still continued to govern even as um, as a tributary uh, power uh, I mean they, they were like under the protection or you know how can I put it it was like a vessel state yeah. right so the over ruling power was the British colonial Empire. establishment so Maharaja or the Raja of Kashmir at the time of the partition was Hari Singh, one of the descendants of Gulab Singh. Mm -hmm. uh, Jinnah approached him for the reason that Muhammad Ali Jinnah, Muhammad the, Ali Jinnah approached yeah. him in 1947 or before that, that Kashmir is a Muslim territory. It, the population is all Muslim. So it would be only fair for you to join Pakistan, right? And uh, then Nehru, Pandit Jawaharlal uh, Nehru, who was the, the leader on the other side, who was representing Congress, uh, Congress party in mm. India, who was one of the founding fathers of current day India. Uh, he approached um, Maharaja Hari Singh that you should uh, uh, become a part of India. So with some reservations, because he was Hindu himself, Hari Singh, he didn't care about the population. And in fact, there were some massacres carried out against the population when they wanted to be with the Muslims. Mm -hmm. uh, he joined hands with India. So India uh, imposed an indirect rule um, on the valley of Jammu and Kashmir, okay, which continued to this day on paper. Of course, uh, Kashmir has been the most heavily militarized region in the world. There is, uh, I mean, there are close to a million soldiers in Kashmir as we speak right wow. now. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, to subdue the valley, to have mm -hmm. control over it. And Pakistan wants it as part of Pakistan because it was claimed by Pakistan as well, right? So uh, Nehru promised when he took Kashmir as his own, mm -hmm. as if it was his, his own, uh, you know, to claim, uh, he promised that we will do a referendum for the population. If the population wants to uh, go independent from India and Pakistan, it's, it would be their choice or if they want to join hands with Pakistan then that referendum never happened unfortunately right mm -hmm. so Kashmir was given a special status um, and the article that guaranteed that was the article 370 in the Indian Constitution and 35a right uh, according to these two articles discussed at the moment right yes which is exactly what was uh, repealed on Monday mm -hmm. these two articles were repealed by the current extremist right-wing BJP Indian government, okay, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they obviously didn't care about agreements made by previous governments and leaders. So these two articles guaranteed uh, the semi-autonomous status of the states of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, so according to these articles, Indian civilians uh, from mainland India couldn't buy land in Kashmir, yeah. okay. The, the, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of India did not did, didn't apply in Jammu and Kashmir. Okay. The people of Jammu and Kashmir could have their own flags. Okay, uh, they would have to consult the main uh, land, uh, the, the Indian government on issues regarding uh, foreign policy, mm -hmm. defense, and things like that, security issues. Other than that, Kashmir was constitutionally a semi-autonomous region without any serious consultation, even with their own politicians, to impose a direct occupational rule over mm. the valley of Jammu and Kashmir. Mm. These two articles were completely repealed by the current Indian government, which is well known for the Indian parliament hatred didn't. against Muslims, mm. for pumping Islamophobia, all the lynchings in India that have been taking place for the last five years. Yeah, have I was just been, actually watching have videos been, today yes. of how bad it is. Yeah, yeah, Muslims are being killed, uh, you know, like, uh, like even like insects, basically, mm. uh, uh, you know, if Hindu mobs get together and they, they decide to kill a Muslim or a Muslim family, uh, it's, it's all good. Police would be, uh, you know, reluctant to take action because a lot of the times police uh, themselves, they sympathize with such mobs and they are, they are part of the, the, the problem. So Muslims are facing a very difficult period, generally speaking, in India. 
Yeah. Very, very difficult period. I mean, recently all these issues have been raised about the, uh, the triple talaq as if Modi or the BJP mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. cares about the exactly. Indian women. And yeah. some of the Muslim leaders have been raising this point that if you yeah. really care about the rights of women, which is the pretext they are using to attack the Muslim community by mm-hmm. using uh, one of the clauses of yeah. the Hanafi fiqh, right? Um, and this is what the Muslim leaders have been speaking about in, in, in India, that don't think this is only a problem of the Hanafis. It is a problem for, for the Muslims because today they are attacking the Hanafi fiqh. Tomorrow they will attack all fiqh. They will attack Islam and this is the aim. Slowly make, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about specifically this particular to, government. It's hard not to question their sincerity about protecting exactly. women where they're being raped in mobs. It, uh, exactly, and exactly. And on top of that, hold on, if you think about women's rights, in India, the the highest uh, rate of rapes in the world, okay, is in India. Unfortunately, India is the rape capital of the world. Number yeah, one, yeah. number two, uh, the highest rate of female infanticide is in India. The yeah. highest number of uh, aborted female fetuses is yeah. in India. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The highest number of child prostitution. Uh, mm. is in India. There are slums in India, Bombay, Bengal, uh, you know, you know, I don't know where, I mean, you go and watch documentaries on YouTube and you will see mm. uh, what's happening to women in India. So it is ironic for the government to suddenly, the BJP government in particular, Very to suddenly wake yeah. up and start defending women's rights when it comes to Muslim, Muslim mm. women, right? And Modi tweeted about that, mm. that today, you know, there is something, freedom for women or something like that. So this is like, Sarkozy, right? Mm. Uh, in in uh, I think not very long ago, when in he France. was the president in France, he said they are imposing this uh, mm. niqab ban to protect uh, women yeah. against oppression. <laughs> but hold on a second, France has a huge population of uh, trafficked women who are being sold in markets. Mm-hmm. France has a huge problem with women. It seems like a normal dr- kind of playbook to yeah. to um, to. To call to a, a crowd baying for kind of uh, the blood of a scapegoat, get angry at this kind of demonized population. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, whilst you continue to kind of increase your own powers as a government. Yes. And uh, distract. And, and and distracting people from real problems. So, so coming, all these coming back to Kashmir. Yeah, coming back to Kashmir. I mean, currently now, unfortunately, the situation is that India has imposed a direct rule over Kashmir. Mm. It's occupation now, basically. It's completely ignoring all the previous treaties and agreements and going against all the United Nations and the United Nations resolutions and and all the advice of uh, international leaders and requests from Pakistan and Kashmiri leaders mm. uh, and even Indian politicians within India Rahul Gandhi the leader of uh, Congress party which is one of the biggest parties in India has severely criticized this move and he has warned that this move will potentially divide India Mm. and uh, big things may happen. Like for the people of Kashmir, I don't know what this means. We have no idea what's going to happen to them. And Mm. Indian army is unfortunately known for committing atrocities in Kashmir. It is well documented. I'm not even making this up. This is not because I'm speaking as a Muslim. My bias is speaking. There is documentary evidence of Indian army committing atrocities against Kashmiri civilians. Okay, thousands of people have disappeared thousands of rapes, okay, and other things. We as Muslim community around the world, we want the best for the people of Kashmir, we want the best for the people of India. But it seems that the government on the other side doesn't want peace and they're doing things like this Mm -hmm. and now there is direct occupation. I really hope and pray that Kashmir doesn't become another Palestine. It is clear that uh, the Indian government, current, the current government, the, why I keep saying the current government, it is ruled by a specific group of people. Mm, mm-hmm. And they are known for their bigotry, they are yeah. known for their hatred towards Muslims, they are known for their hatred towards Sikhs yeah. and Dalits. And uh, it, it, is an, it, it is an elite which doesn't seem to be caring about the people of India because of the kind, because of the kind of things they're doing. And uh, uh, if India had problems previously, what this government might end up doing is is c- completely escalating those problems out of control, right? And mm-hmm. it is very possible that our fears uh, about the region may uh, may come true. Uh, but we really hope for peace and justice for all people in mm-hmm. the world, whether it's Kashmiris or Indians. And before we end, a very quick note that we as Muslims, we represent a civilization, right? 
we don't represent a particular ethnicity or a, or a particular language or a particular piece of land mm-hmm. we represent a civilization it is a living civilization it started with the advent of the prophet of islam sallallahu alaihi wasallam it has a unique feature mm-hmm. it has a unique character we represent that civilization we represent our poets our authors our libraries our hospitals our our street lights in cordoba we represent our philosophers in baghdad we represent our theologians in in damascus we represent our artists for example calligraphers in india we represent all of that islamic civilization is absolutely beautiful and this is what we need to highlight we need to show the world that you can't just jump from a bunch of extremists straight to the prophet and link them to the prophet no mm. if you want to talk about the prophet then you start talking about the rich what history took place between the, the 21st century and exactly the yeah. rich history of the muslim civilization or the islamic mm. civilization if you want to call that akla khair call that akla khair call that akla khair